Yes, you referred uh, briefly to the inquiry, which was all set up and running, but unfortunately the chair was taken ill, so it has, has to be delayed, and a new chair will have to be appointed. That delay will be upsetting to, obviously, some of your victims, and no doubt other people as well. What sort of effect has that had? Well, of course, it brings in unwelcome delay, um, and as far as I'm aware, we, we still don't know when this inquiry actually will take place as to when the, you know when the inquiry will actually sit and take evidence and listen to the victims and other witnesses so it is frustrating your participation presumably you will represent some people at the inquiry if necessary well the victims that I represent or my firm represents um, wants us wants me to represent them in the inquiry um, individually or as a group or both in effect yeah. They, um, by and large, all want to attend the inquiry and give evidence to tell their stories. They also want questions asked, and they want representation, and they want my firm to represent them. So it'll be interesting to find out whether all of that is going to be possible. Well, the possibility is the, the spectre of the resistance going to loom again? In other words, are the, the cost implications of having you employed, is that going to be a factor? Well, if there's going to be an inquiry, it needs to be done properly, it needs to be effective. Otherwise, it's going to be a waste of everybody's time and money. Um, it, it would be a false economy not to deal with it effectively and properly because you would be wasting money and if the inquiry isn't seen to be as rigorous as it ought to be, as thorough as it ought to be, then there will still be complaints, questions, general aggro um, that we're all familiar with and people will be saying what a colossal waste of money. So I take the long term view which is that it is better to deal with things in the correct way and fund it properly because that will mean that things will be dealt with quicker and smarter and probably be a lot cheaper in the long run. But that presumably wasn't allowed for in the original compensation terms. I think that is an entirely separate budget affair as it were as far as, I, as, far as I'm aware. Did you have any conversations with the the, the chair, the lady who was going to chair? The no, I've never had that opportunity which was a great shame. But I've made um, the states of Jersey aware of the general um, concerns and feelings of the clients that we represent. Your fees must be quite substantial in this. And uh, who actually, just remind us, who actually is footing your bill? Point one, I haven't been paid a penny yet. Point two, we get paid at, if we're going to get paid, we get paid at a rate specified in the um, terms of, of the um, scheme. And to ensure that the scheme actually happened, um, we agreed to accept a far lower rate of pay than we would ordinarily be entitled to. So, having made those couple of points, then yes, the states of Jersey will have to pay my clients legal fees, whatever they amount to. I am uh, incredibly shocked that you haven't been yet to receive a penny because you've been on the case for uh, more than 12 months. Somebody must be put on the case up. for several years now, I think right. four or five years actually. It? But, but anyway, so, seems a long time. Uh, of, um, and yeah, it's yeah. not just your fees, it's the staying, travelling. Yes, my firm has had to fund all of that out of our own pocket, as it were. Um, Have we any idea what just the expenses, what they will add up to uh, to date? Uh, no, oh, there will be a five figure sum. Yeah. Yep. The other side, are their lawyers being paid as they go or are they waiting for the final sum as well? I do not know um, and um, I'm sure um, they'd love to hear from you about <laughs> that question. Have we any idea what rate they're going to be paid? Uh, no, I don't know. Um, would it be um, unfair if you were paid at a different or lesser rate? It would be unfair but that's life. If they are paid at a, a, a higher rate than my firm then yes that would be fair but we have, we have to live in the real world and get on with it.
You, there are a few cases which you're dealing with arise under the Jimmy Savile case. Do they fit into any aspect of these matters we've already discussed? Is there any... Jimmy Savile has featured in the Hodegren case, yes. Right. So there will be claims going to the same fund for compensation as arising from Jimmy Savile, or is that compensation... He's, he's, he's very much as far as I'm aware, on the margin, but he has featured in one of the cases which um, 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 was uh, subjected to the scheme, and I can't really say any more than that right. because it would be unfair on, on, the, on the person involved. There have been allegations, um, convictions arising from behaviour at schools in the island. Have any complaints come your way looking for conversation as a result of school behaviour? As far as my firm is concerned, I'm not aware. Is there any reason why such people shouldn't pursue if they've been sexually abused at the school? Well, it's, it, my, my opinion is, is that if someone has been um, abused, um, they have every right to bring a case against the wrongdoer, or those responsible for the wrongdoer. The extent of sexual abuse against children, not necessarily girls, but uh, throughout the institutions of Britain, it seems to be, I don't know what you'd call it really, it's just every day there's another story. Even the police in the UK are being alleged that when they get people in custody, they're sexually abusing them. They might be slightly older people, but there seems to be nowhere which is safe. Is it as bad as that, or is it just... Well, um, if you judge life entirely through what one read in the newspapers and observed on television or whatever, one could take a very depressing view of the world that we live in. I would venture an opinion that the problem of child abuse obviously is still very much still with us. I'm not convinced that there's, there are more children being abused than there were in the past. What is different, I think, is the preparedness of the victims to come forward and complain. Whereas in the past, um, it was more difficult for victims to come forward. There's always this concern that they wouldn't be believed, be subjected to ridicule and so on. That is still with us, that those issues, those concerns, but through the media exposure that there has been over recent times, I think victims are now finding their feet more and are more prepared to come forward. Also the police, in my experience, are far better trained in dealing with these cases than they used to be. Um, you come across some pretty impressive police officers who are trained in this type of work and they do um, you know, if I'm putting like this, a marvellous job in investigating and securing prosecutions. So I think that's where we're at. Um, so, yeah, it, you could take a very depressing view about it all. Um, and it, of course, you know, in one sense it is extremely depressing, but the fact that adults are prepared to do these things to other human beings, in particular children. But the other side of it is, is the fact that, well, actually, as a society, we're more prepared to deal with it than perhaps we were in the past. The celebrity dimension is quite extraordinary, it especially seems to centre around the BBC of all organisations. But one of the uh, unfortunate uh, responses to that is that uh, there's a sort of sympathy for the perpetrators, because they are celebrities, and that people are coming out of the history books, making ancient claims, and well, that was what went on then, that sort of thing, or they asked for it, or they... You do hear these, you know, these opinions, but they're very misguided ones, and they're not based in fact or evidence. Um, they seem to be off-the-cuff remarks with, that, with very little thought behind them. Um, it was said in the early days as regards to Jimmy Savile's victims. But when you actually looked at the evidence, those sort of arguments were entirely ill-founded, um, misjudged. The victims were very innocent. 
Um, you can see television footage of Top of the Pops from the early 70s, and, uh, and you can just see that the children, because that's what they were, young teenagers, they weren't asking for it. Far from it. They were very innocent, very naive, they weren't even dressed remotely in any kind of provocative way. It's absolute folly to try and suggest in any shape or form that there was any fault on the part of the victims. And it's insulting to us, insulting our intelligence to try and suggest that is the case, and of course doubly insulting to the victims. So people who say these things, oh it's different in the past, total rubbish total rubbish, it's, in, it's insulting to people's intelligence. It was a crime then to abuse children in the same way as it's a crime now. Um, end of. Allied to the this aspect, the actual direct abuse of children, is the promotion of child pornography. And obviously for every film of a child in these films, there is a real child somewhere and sometimes these are in Jersey local children that have been filmed people go to prison but is there, I haven't heard or does it happen or maybe I'm not aware of it, the children themselves taking action against the perpetrator for the damages in rather the similar way to which you're interesting question because I'm not aware of any of the children who are victims actually bringing any cases um, my argument is that those who sit at their computer screens, that's what they're doing, um, watching these terrible things happen, um, are guilty and should be dealt with. You know, they are as guilty as the person who is at the other end of the computer spectrum, as it were, and the internet um, um, with the child. Um, this is I presume yeah. one of the problems is that the perpetrators, if your local guy hasn't got a great deal of funding, but I don't know, maybe Google or Facebook or somebody ought to be the person, ought to be the body that's uh, pursued for compensation as the carriers of the information, they as they are in many cases. Again, an interesting question, um, and would make an interesting test case. Um, but I suppose they would say um, they were not a party to what was going on. I suppose in the same way as the post office would say they're not a party to what's going on. If there was a, um, a DVD or CD or something being posted from one criminal to another, they'd say, well, we didn't know what was in the, in the package. We just, you know, the... The courier, as it were, we're just you know the guys delivering the, the the product, as it were. So I would imagine that Google or whoever would have a similar argument. I think to deal with the problem, you have to go to those at either end of the internet, you know, the, the organizer, as well as the the user, as it were, and deal with them. One area which we t touched on before and fascinates me, I don't know if it fascinates you quite so much, as an English lawyer and the, you representing people in Jersey as an English lawyer against the Jersey system. Has anything happened on that? I know they're looking at the Jersey legal aid scheme, but are you aware of anything happening? Uh, any suddenly pricking of consciences amongst Jersey lawyers because they were visibly absent as far as these victims were concerned? I'm not aware of anything and I was just you take your camera <laughs> and knock on their doors and ask them. <laughs> I wish they were so open as you are to receiving my invitations. Anything else you want to tell us? I don't think so. Very comprehensive, as always. Most grateful. Cheers.